In the year 2020, I think we can all agree that gaming isn't just for kids. A lot of adults play video games, some casual and some hardcore. But either way, I think when you're an adult who loves playing video games, there are a set of things that you will experience at one point or another. With that said, I'm Elijah with the Icon, and this is 10 Things Only Adult Gamers Will Experience. While I have you here, please give us a like, share, and subscribe. It really helps us out. We're trying to get to over a thousand subscribers. Thank you. Number 10. Having money for games, but no time to play. We want to play every game that strikes our fancy. But as kids, especially if you didn't have parents that gamed or understood gaming, you weren't going to get a lot of games. Games are expensive, and that money could go towards food or college or something lame like that. But once you're an adult, and provided you've been able to find a job that allows you to live comfortably and have expendable income, you can finally buy the games you want. But plot twist, to make that money means you have to sacrifice your time, the one thing you seem to have a lot of as a kid. Which sucks, because now you have expendable income that could go towards gaming, but now you have little to no time to enjoy them. It's like life is a joke and you're the punchline. Number 9 Finding other adults to play with So tell me if this sounds familiar. You're at work and people are talking about whatever show's big right now, whatever Game of Thrones bullcrap that's on Netflix. But all you want to do is talk about the new activity that went live in the game you love. But for whatever reason, you're too afraid or embarrassed to speak up about it. Then one day, you hear someone in the office mention that game and your heart skips a beat. You flock towards them like Pepe Le Pew to a cat with an unfortunate white paint mark on their back. Finally, someone who speaks your language, someone who understands you. You give them your PSN only to realize they play exclusively on Xbox. It's heartbreaking. For whatever reason, it's hard for adults to find other adults to play games. Things like Discord have certainly made it easier, but there's still this phobia over being an adult gamer. Like we fear the judgmental eyes if we say we spent all weekend playing video games, which is crazy because most people do some sort of gaming, whether it's mobile, console, or PC, and not to mention the studies that show the countless benefits of gaming. But still, we feel the need to justify playing games in a room full of people who just spent their weekend binge watching Netflix. Number eight. Gaming feeling like a chore. We've already said that sometimes when you're an adult, you don't have a lot of time to game. But ever played an ongoing game like Destiny, a game where you don't want to get too far behind your clan or guild or whatever, so you force yourself to play even when you don't want to? Maybe you're tired from a long day at work. But all you want to do is go to bed, but nope, you bought a battle pass and you want to get the most out of it. So you force yourself in front of your gaming platform of choice and turn it on. We all love gaming. It's a fun hobby, but it sucks when you feel like you have to do it instead of just doing it because you want to. Number seven. Spending your entire vacation slash holiday gaming. It's a three day weekend. So what are you gonna do? Spend time with your family? Travel? Nope, you're gonna spend the entire time in your pajamas eating takeout and playing video games. People ask you what you plan on doing on your vacation, you just kinda smile as you hear the screams of all the enemies you're gonna lay waste to when you don't have to come to the soul-sucking place you call work. Because let's face it, for some of us, work is just something we do so we can afford to play more games. When you're able to just play games and not worry about work or the people at work and you're just able to play, it's the best feeling in the world. And no one, and I mean no one, better bother you. Or there will be trouble. Number six. Having a bunch of unplayed games. I have a story for you. Went to a friend's house on New Year's Eve. We wanted to play some games, so I grabbed the Switch, a few co-op games, and a couple party games. I picked up snipper clips, went to take it out the cartridge, only to realize the game still had a cellophane wrapped around it. Other games I still have wrapped up are Detroit Becoming Human, Death Stranding, and don't get me started on all the unplayed free PSN games. I have the newest releases, but have I played them? Nope, still haven't even finished Spider-Man or Resident Evil 7, and I pre-ordered them. I paid extra money to get them early, and I still haven't finished them. This is partly due to what I said earlier about having an ongoing game you have to keep up with. For me, it's Destiny. I have a clan, and it doesn't look good if the clan leader is never on. Hashtag struggle bus. And then there's other things to keep me away from the games, like relationships, family, life commitments, it's hard being an adult. 
Number 5 Trying to get your significant other into gaming. You love them, so of course you want to play with them. We all dream, whether we're a guy or a girl, to have a partner that will game with us. We say it's because we want that bonding experience, which is true for the most part, but there's a tiny bit of us that wants it so our partner won't bother us while we're gaming. We've seen the memes. As soon as you turn your game on, your partner gets an attitude. You don't need that type of negativity in your life. Whatever the reason for it, a lot of us want a partner that games with us, if nothing else, so they can relate to our struggle. But if they're not a gamer coming into the relationship, then starts the conversion process. Things like looking at pre-existing hobbies to figure out what kind of game they might like. For instance, if they like reading high fantasy novels like The Lord of the Rings or The Witcher, then they might like playing The Legend of Zelda, World of Warcraft, or, you know, The Witcher. Or you have someone who's a horror fan, so then you have them play Resident Evil. Either way, you begin poking and prodding at them, trying to find the game they like so you can convert them into being a gamer just like you. Number 4 Blowing off sleep before work so you can game. It's 10 p.m. You know you have work tomorrow, so you calculate that you can play for an hour and a half, get ready for tomorrow and be in bed by midnight and get 8 hours of sleep. But somehow, it's 12.30 now. So you say one more game and you'll get to bed at 1. That's still enough sleep. Right? Now it's 3 in the morning, and you're wondering if you can function on 4 hours of sleep. The sun starts coming up, and now you have to act surprised, like you didn't know you were staying up all night. You know what I'm talking about. The old, what? The sun's coming up? I had no idea. I have to go. So then you rush to bed and sleep for like an hour and show up to work grumpy at everyone. We've all done this. It's irresponsible. But boy, is it fun in the moment. Number 3 Me and your gaming friends in real life. This is a big perk of being an adult gamer. You don't have to go ask your mom if you can travel five states over to meet someone you met online, because if she loves you, she'll tell you no. But you're an adult now, and you have your own money, so you decide to meet your friends you've been talking to for years. Sometimes the people we meet online are the best friends we have. Gaming is truly a bonding experience, so naturally, as you play with these people and you begin to care for them, the next step is meeting. It's fun visiting someone you've been talking to, and they get to show you the places and things they've been describing for years. Or conversely, they visit you, and you get to show them around. I think this is one of my favorite things about being an adult gamer. Just being able to hang out with people you've helped save worlds, brought evil dictators with, and complained about connectivity issues. There's no lag in real life, trust me. Number 2 Taking time off to play new releases so you finally realize the best way to handle having money to buy but not having time to play games problem, and it's better time management. And part of that is knowing when new games are coming out so you can take time off from work. We've all done it. Saw a new game or huge DLC was about to drop in a couple months, so we take that time off. Always awkward when your boss asks why you need time off. You can't just say I'm going to be playing games, so you say it's a cousin's wedding, which could end up sucking if the release is delayed and you have to go back to them and explain how your cousin's wedding was delayed. Number one. Coming home tired from work and playing anyway. Like we said, gaming can feel like a chore. However, there are times when we want to play even though we are tired. You come home from a long day, you're beat, but playing your game has been on your mind all day long. Despite being exhausted, you feel yourself press the power button on your game console because at the end of the day, you love gaming. So what if you have to put off sleep? You have a princess to save. Thank you for watching this video and please, while you're here, don't forget to hit that bell, give us a subscribe, like the video, share it with someone who could relate to the struggle of being an adult gamer. It really helps us out guys and we will be back tomorrow with a new video.